This is for the ethics review class at Parker University. We've been talking about business owners and the business entities that can use to operate their business. In this video, we're going to talk briefly about the limited liability company. Essentially, the legislatures began to notice that corporations and the different formalities, the roles of shareholders, directors, and officers just didn't fit with the operation of small businesses. So the legislators created limited liability companies and they provide many of the same benefits of a corporation but they uh, don't require the same level of formality. Uh, generally the cost to organize a limited liability company is about the same as a to organize a corporation but that still makes it more expensive than organizing a sole proprietorship or a partnership. The limited liability company has members who are the owners and those owners may run the business directly, or if they're not going to be directly involved in running the business, they may select managers to run the business. So it's a more direct way to run the business rather than having shareholders, directors, and officers. The limited liability company, like a corporation, will protect the owners from personal liability. And we'll talk a little bit about which personal liability is covered and which personal liability is not covered. So again, it's similar to a corporation, but in, in, in that it has the same benefits as a corporation. You do not have to have a board of directors. You do not have to have officers. Now, some limited liability companies will elect or appoint officers like presidents or vice presidents or secretary or treasurer uh, so that they will have that title, but it's not necessary to do that. The members or the owners may operate the business directly or they can choose managers to operate the business. Like a corporation, a limited liability company should maintain a record book. And that record book should reflect that the LLC is being operated or that the members of the LLC are operating that business as a separate entity and not just using it as a personal piggy bank. Uh, so think about that and make sure you keep those records like we discussed for corporations. So just a quick summary of the business entities. The sole proprietorships and the general partners never, ever protect the owners from personal liability. And the big risk of a general partnership is not only do the owners become liable for their own conduct, they also become liable, personally liable, for the conduct of the other owners of the partnership. And that's a risk that just doesn't make sense unless you have an incredible amount of trust for the partners that you're working with. These entities do give some protection from personal liability. Corporations and the limited liability companies. Now, I haven't talked previously about professional corporations or professional limited liability companies, but in order to uh, practice a profession, a person has to have a license. And in most businesses or most professions, only members of the profession may own a business that practices that profession. So the idea of the professional corporations, professional associations, and professional limited liability companies is when these business entities are created to practice a profession, the only owners of the business should be people who are licensed to practice that profession. Now, the chiropractic profession in Texas is somewhat unique because it's not necessary that all the owners be licensed to practice chiropractic. So it may be more appropriate to organize as a limited liability company rather than a professional limited liability company. I also want to make sure you understand that a business entity is not an absolute protection from all personal liability. If a business owner engages in personal conduct, they have personal liability for that conduct. Malpractice is a great example. If a business owner is the doctor treating a patient and the patient is damaged by malpractice and sues for malpractice, they may sue the individual doctor who conducted that treatment. 
So even though the business entity is organized, it's not always going to protect you from that liability where you're personally involved. Uh, the only way to protect yourself in that situation is to have appropriate insurance in place. The entity also provides no protection if the owners have signed personal guarantees. You'll remember back when we talked about lease agreements, one of the terms I talked about were personal guarantees. If the owners have signed that personal guarantee, they've essentially agreed to become personally liable if the business entity fails to pay the bill. So keep in mind that these entities give you some protection and there's some value to, to what they provide, but it's not an absolute protection from personal liability. And it's still necessary to have insurance in place to give you some protection or some additional protection for, from personal liability. Just a few quick comments about taxation. Essentially, there's two types of ways to, to tax business entities. They're either taxed as a pass-through entity or as a separate entity. Pass-through entity means that the uh, business entity files an information return. The business entity will report the income it received and its business expenses and its profits. And then the owners of the company will pay income tax on the profits of the company or their share of the profits of the company. So as I mentioned previously, a sole proprietorship will file a Form 1040 and attach a Schedule C. A partnership files a form, I believe it's 1065. Uh, Subchapter S Corporation files a form uh, 1121, uh, but it, those entities don't actually pay income tax. They just report, here's the income and the expenses and the profits. Uh, corporations and limited liability companies may also elect to be taxed as separate entities. The corporations, that's their default status. The LLCs would actually have to file a, an election to be taxed as a separate entity. And the danger of being taxed as a separate entity is if you don't coordinate the profits and dividends carefully, you run the risk that your profits are gonna be taxed twice. They get taxed once as profits to the business entity and then get taxed again as dividends to the owner. And that's a situation, unless you just enjoy paying taxes, that's a situation you want to avoid. So be careful, think about the business entity that makes the most sense for what you're trying to create. If money is extremely tight, a sole proprietorship may be an acceptable way to start a chiropractic practice. But at some point, you will probably want to create an LLC to give you some protection from limited from personal liability.